Hello, my name is Jennifer Mason. I am the Dynamic Soil Properties Focus Team Leader. Hopefully by the time I'm recording this, you will have a new person announced behind Sky Will's former job on my Club Awesome staff to lead this effort. Um, really quickly, I'm not going to take too much of your time today. Over the past few, the past year, um, the team has produced a National Instruction Part 308 and National Bulletins concerning Dynamic Soil Properties guidance. There was an early release in 2020, and then subsequently we had two people on detail, Francine Laritier, who is an area conservationist out of Colorado, and Dee Peterson, state soil scientist of Georgia, on detail to the Soil and Plant Science Division to work on revisions of the guidance and to review the state sides of the part of dynamic soil properties. Um, once that guidance was released, um, it was an effort to walk the soil survey offices through that in the middle of a global pandemic. Um, we also are reviewing website changes once we flesh out staffing, focus teams, looking at changes to the NASA's database. I know I have been meeting with the senior regionals and Kyle Stevens concerning milestones, quality assurance, quality control into the site and pet on data. We also have two new newer sub teams now. Um, ESD DSP sub team led by Aaron Hurahan, ecological site data quality specialist in Tupelo, Texas, and an MLRA soil survey sub team led by Lance Howe, an MLRA soil survey leader out of Redville, South Dakota. So, for a couple of webinars that we produced, uh, Francine had led one concerning the guidance that was just fleshed out, that was the bulk of her detail was reconstructing that guidance and making it more clear, more outlined, and more robust. Her webinar with DSP and Beyond, and Dee Peterson held a webinar called Dynamic Soil Properties and Soil Health, Opportunities for State and Soil Survey Collaboration. The target audience here was state leadership. Um, if you want to review these um, webinars, they are recorded, and my email address will be at the end of the presentation. But just in case, it's jennifer.mason at usda.gov. But I encourage you to view these. They were excellent webinars. Moving forward over the next five years and maintaining momentum, I want to think of this as broken down into long range, a long range plan broken down into five, 10, 15 year goals. But for right now, especially on the heels of a pandemic, we all got hit really hard. Looking at the next five years, more importantly, the next year or so as we come out of this. It's distributing the workload. As Michael Botham has presented in the past, our leaders have presented in the past, we are understaffed. So the distribution of the workload for dynamics of properties will still maintain with hopefully with the focus team, even though they do announce uh, the position to follow behind Scott and distributing that workload amongst the, the sub teams. Um, this could include clarifying any questions concerning the new guidance, uh, enlisting members, from the states to work with the regions and the projects, examples of tech, through the tech teams and management team meetings. And I'll hit this tech team and management team meeting process really hard in the next few slides. Encourage members from the states to engage their staffs and invite members from other focus teams during quarterly focus team meetings. The regional offices are another integral part, another cog in the wheel um, that we are working with constantly to keep in communication with. Participate in the monthly re regional teleconferences. Encourage participation with the cooperators and state staff in the tech and management team process. Assess soil survey office lab equipment needs through the regions, just such as soil temperature monitors, scales, ovens, etc. Continue to provide clarification, web training of guidance if needed. KSSL lab staff and liaisons are also included in this, in this process which they are involved in the monthly regional teleconferences and also the tech team meetings. Members of the DSP focus team that are from the states or additional cooperators could also, could also provide perspective through these monthly teleconferences or the tech teams. And of course, encourage social survey office staff to engage with soil, state soil health committees. And this representation could also come from the regions as well. Again, back to the focus team involvement, uh, cross-pollination between focus teams is very important. We can't operate in a vacuum. And sometimes you can't help but to, it becomes part of the process. But we have been meeting with the ecosystems and dynamics focus team, the outreach and communications team, 
The Urban Focus Team, of which we did develop another um, sub-team, the DSP sub-team for urban work. The leader is Randy Riddle. And the research focus team, so much of the DSP efforts overlaps with the research. They fuse into one. So that's a natural progression. Other focus team involvements, interpretations, DSM, soil survey database, especially when it comes to milestones, the QA, the QC. I have met with the senior regionals and Kyle Stevens on um, NASA's database work for QAQC of the site and pedon data, as well as the development of milestones, training team, the coastal zone, dynamic soil survey, and initial soil survey. We work heavily with the KSSL lab and collaborate them on monitoring the lab flow of incoming DSP projects. We got caught really hard in COVID. The lab could not be in the lab at once. They also were hit by the virus, um, which shut things down for a while. We had to skirt in the field between quarantines and lockdowns and the whole nine yards. You know, one minute you go out, you have an exposure. The next minute you're in quarantine for 14 days. So this is really tough to get through. Um, we pushed, I helped push a lot of the offices back from the intensive level, which is the heaviest laboratory involved level down to the intermediate, which is the soil survey office lab operation level. So working with those teams, those teams across the nation, the offices, um, worked with Skywheels and Ekandio Adili as far as kits available for soil survey offices to borrow. Those are bulk density, pop C or active C, water stable aggregates, and amusimeters. We ran into a hurdle here because a lot of the chemicals for the water stable aggregates for the pop C were in backlog, um, got caught in the supply chain debacle there. So again, within the next year, hopefully the idea is to get beyond the hurdles of the pandemic that hit everyone. And of course, as the focus team leader, I keep involved with findings of the recent current details we had last year. And we're still, you know, finding glitches in the guidance here and there that we work out, or maybe ways that we reword stuff, or maybe new ideas, new ways to handle things as a result of things like the pandemic. Um, and then maintain the communication between DSP focus team, national leaders, and of course, national headquarters. One of the things to help keep this momentum going, I do like the DSP effort. From my experience as a beef and hog farmer, uh, I was a soil conservation technician delivering conservation plans to farmers, landowners, customers um, in East Tennessee. I see this as an opportunity to return to the community effort that soil survey used to be. At one time prior to 2012, when you were in a soil survey area for three to five years, you became involved with the community. People seemed to know who you were. You may even find that you may be related to some people in the area that you were working. You never know. And you, we also, as county soil scientists, we used to have, in those areas where you had county soil scientists, we used to participate in county board meetings where we presented our findings, our progress. And in those county board meetings, those people are all over the soil survey area. They are also close with NRCS, soil conservation staff. And it's a great way to go back to our roots and establish the community effort for dynamic, dynamics of properties. So many people are finally seeing that this is important, that we monitor this data. It's a new realm for soil survey inventory, and they're, they're really on board, and that includes the states. Maintaining communication with soil survey offices and participate, you know, in any meetings or calls, whether it's the state soil health committees, it could be CART, you know, meetings, um, any, any type of meeting, you know, with the state offices or the area offices, it would be great if we could be involved is from a soil survey office perspective. Um, you know, the states can contact the Soil and Plant Science Division staff when new soil health efforts arise. They can communicate effectively with partners and cooperators. Um, again, bridging gaps that we might have had, you know, since 2012. They can also assist and work with the soil survey offices and cooperators on an education on DSP project requirements. The state is, good, is a good advisor to our cooperators. The state soil scientists are liaisons. Involve state soil scientists in all soil and plant science division and DSP meetings. Encourage collaboration with the state office staff, area office staff, and the state soil health specialist. Partners and cooperators. Soil survey offices engage existing and external and internal partners and cooperators through the tech and management team process. Again, getting that 
that process is key to establishing projects and developing future workloads. Continuing education on DSP project requirements, develop appropriate and complete DSP project proposals, provide support that is needed, data analysis and publications, evaluate ideas for future requests for research proposals, such as CIGs or requests for research, possible agreements with university, universities that may have lab capabilities, such as soil biology. And there's nothing more important than the tech and the management team process. The team meeting process is a function of the National Cooperative Soil Survey and a perfect time to involve the conservation staff, soil health specialists, universities, state, local, or federal partners, and other cooperators. Emphasizing the technical and management teams is the basis for identifying the needs of the customer, whether that's NRCS, soil conservation district, a farmer, a cooperator, such as um, natural Heritage, Forest Service, BLM, DOE, the list goes on and on. Dynamic soil property projects afford the opportunity for soil survey offices to collaborate with the states on soil health priority and further the robust scientific data delivery for which this way is done. This is a new movement, um, in my opinion, towards a new realm of, of soil survey inventory, and I think it's a great process um, for engaging the customer. The customer wants this data, they need the data. And I encourage everyone to, to get involved. If you need anything, my contact info is jennifer.mason at usda.gov. And I thank you for your time today.